Hi guys, what's up? My name is Abim Black Rick. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome, subscribe. I have a guest. Um, I'm not sure this is something that's going to be happening quite often, so please have zero expectations. However, this is where we are. Um, this is a gentleman. I will let him introduce himself and then we'll take it from there. He does not know what even we're about to talk about, but yeah. such is life. Oh yeah, introduce yourself. My name is Koye, and I have no idea what's coming next. Okay, cool. Koye, how did we meet? Hmm, um, I believe it was sometime in 2006. Was it? There about. Yeah, actually yeah. it was, a year after I just moved back. We met through your cousin, Wally. Yes, we did. Good times. We did do. Mm -hmm. When I was living in Okwebi. We were all living in Ikeja then. Hmm, we were Ikeja nights. Yeah. That's the way. Mainland forever. Gang gang. Until I die. <laughs> gang shit. Every minute, that's all. Ooh, ooh. Island boy. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, that's how Koye and I met. And we've been friends ever since. Our friendship has had its usual hiccups. And so, literally, this entire conversation is about friendship. Right? And it's very interesting. Koye was one of the very few people I invited to my brother's wedding in 2013 in America. And he came. Koye knows my mother. Koye knows everybody in my family. Koye is my boy, literally speaking. Yep. Um, how would you describe our friendship so far? Uh, I think it has evolved. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, well, you know. We used to fight a lot before. Oh, no. Um, no, no, Koye used know. to fight me a lot. There's a difference. No. But yeah, go ahead. I mean, I think... Um, I used to get a kick out of pushing Mimbo's buttons. Everybody does. Um, <laughs> the buttons are there for you to see. It's really there. Just saying, mm. push me, push me. So, and her reactions are always comic, you know. So, um, that used to be fun until it wasn't fun anymore. And um, but yeah, we've evolved. I think we've gone through several iterations of our friendship, mm. from everyday conversations to times when we are not. Um, speaking for months you know True. but i think the foundation is still there the friendship the love the, um, the family feel you know you know when you, you know someone is not your blood brother but this person is your family um closest thing beyond you know sibling so yeah i would use the word evolved over time i think it's in a good space now i think so too i think also we've been there as friends for each other in some very monumental significant times in our lives um my dad passing, mm -hmm. your mom passing, mm -hmm. and sometimes healthcare you go issues. through healthcare issues, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Your scare, my brain surgery, yep. and you go through things like that. And I guess that's even why, even when we don't speak, or we go months without speaking, like you said, the foundation is still there. Because there's certain things that you go through with certain people that regardless of whatever it is, there's always just going to be that constant love, right? And that friendship and that tightness there. It's something I'm thankful for, to be honest. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Because you I have, um, you know, experienced other types of friendships, you know, um, mm. friendships that need a lot of servicing, a lot of maintenance, mm. you know. Um, there's this one person who broke my heart last year. And I'll say broke my heart, I mean, in. No, no, trust me, I get you. You know, in. <laughs> friendships, in you have had yeah, break in because, friendships. You know, um, this is someone who I identified with, someone who I imprinted on and I thought it was vice versa. You know, things like you talked about, went through hard times together, monumental life changes together. And then obviously there's been this gap over the few, last few years. And mm. this person was getting married. And I found out on Instagram on the day, you know, after all my congratulations and whatnot, I couldn't hold it. And I said, ah, I'm a bit surprised. I wish I was there front and center. I would have been you know, with 30 yards of Agbada and whatnot. And the response was, you know, shocking. You know, it was more like, oh, you're not constant in my life right now. I only invited the people who are in my current circle. And I'm like, mm. all right, you know what? I was going to start arguing it, but I just left it alone. I was like, you know what, just do you. And um, I still wish you well. So thank you for your level of friendship. Um, I appreciate you and I don't take you for granted. Please. Koye is, if I was to say I had a baby brother, even though he's older than me, I will call Koye Jo my baby brother. And it's the only reason why I'm able to allow a lot of his excesses 
And the reason why I say that is I'm trying to make you guys understand that sometimes in friendships, regardless of how long you've been friends, there are certain times where the dynamic of the friendship changes. And it depends on how you choose to view it that can keep it together. I've learned that in friendship, you need to give grace. I have friends that are very different from different upbringings, different pedigree, different, just very different. But I've taken time out to understand the majority of them, which is why when they do a lot, I'm able to just deal with it and look beyond the now. And I said that to say, even that your friend that said that to you, I'm sure her, her approach and how she explained it to you was not the best. However, if you sit down and give her a little bit of grace, knowing fully well that life is happening to a lot of us, yeah. we're all going through shit, right? Sometimes you tend to cling to those that are there for you in the now. Not a lot of people are able to have foresight to still be able to look back, bring those people and involve them in their future, and then look forward as well. I don't know if that makes sense. Koye has jealousy issues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a jealous friend. My friends can attest That's to true. this. Boy, bye. My friends can attest to this. I'm not a jealous. I, you can be friends with me and be friends with 50 other million people. It's okay. Man, as long as when it's time for me and you to have our me time, we have it. That's okay. The lines can be blurry. I'm not, and maybe that's because I'm also very heavily introverted. So I, I don't mind being by myself. Kweijo has jealousy issues. Now I say this to say, we we're talking yesterday and then I was like, he was like, oh, you, what is your new friend? Even today again, he's already said it. What is your new friend? And then I was like, wait, I don't understand. Am I hard to be friends with? And he was like, no, Bimba, not necessarily that you are hard. And then he spoke about me being a celebrity, right? And so I want to ask the next question, which is, would you say as your friend, because you knew me before and now you know me now, anything has changed in terms of me as a person? And would you say, or can you explain how my celebrity status has made you feel as my friend? <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't think you've changed in terms of how you are as a friend. Mm. Yeah, you have changed as a person, definitely. Um, you're a lot more patient now. True. Um, you're a lot less opinionated now. True. Um, which is not necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's just I agree. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I would, I would say that, yes, you haven't changed as a friend. You, the foundations of the reasons why I... Identified of you as identified you as my friend it still remains mm. the same loyalty, um, you know care your cerebral nature, mm. um, etc etc. Let's not let your head this exceed okay. your braids. Okay, so um, yeah, and maybe how I feel you as my friend, I guess will probably be not probably in the early days. I would say in the early days, not now. Probably let's say ten years ago when you first mm. started in TV and all of that. Mm. Um, I think it was hard to adjust to the bimbo that I know from Ikeja, my G, my homegirl, mm. to the bimbo who, when I'm walking on the street with, you know, several people are just trying to grab your attention and take photos with you. Mm. Um, so would I say I failed you as a friend? No, but I say maybe I did not adjust quick enough mm. um, to realize that, you know, you were in the limelight and my role as your friend was to make room for you. You know, fair enough. Um, but I think I quickly pivoted from that, to be honest. Um, you need trying. No, nah, I'm good, babe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, so and, and I think yesterday was because you were talking about some friends who didn't really understand you and mm. all of that, and I was just trying to explain it to you that you know it's you a know, their that, problem. It's it's usually a their problem because I have been there, I felt it, and luckily enough, I was quickly able to identify and deal with it. And not let it affect our friendship or think that you are all of a sudden a different person, mm. right? Um, it takes one thing to understand the person before the limelight mm. and then understand the person in the limelight and be able to separate, you know, the job from the persona, from the persona. The characters, and then the mm. newness that they're coming into as well. Because I get everybody that. evolves. So I think that's probably where maybe most of your friends would have struggled. Uh, I don't think it's unique. I think most people who are in the limelight would say that they've probably heard, you know, one or two similar, um, similar conversations. I so I think it's not nothing too too deep to worry about. Yes, you will lose some friends. Those are people who probably who cannot um, process. Mm. 
or even have the conversation. Yeah. I think what happened yesterday was you had friends who had issues with you but couldn't bring up the issues. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I told you as much that it's their issue and sometimes it might feel childish. So that's why as an adult, you might not even bring it up like, oh, I miss my friend or who am I? You are my friend's new friend. Friendly. You know, it sounds silly. It does. So even bringing it up itself might never happen. But the feelings are legitimate. No, they are. You know, and they, they usually come from a place of love, really. Once you understand usually. that. Usually. Once you understand that, then you can, you can Manoeuvre handle it. Manoeuvre around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's it, really. Yeah. Mm. For those that don't know, first of all, Koi is married. Yeah, I'd be married, yeah. He married. He got two kids. Uh, do you think it's possible? I mean, I would say we're living testimonies to it, but people will now speak a different story. Do you think it's possible to be friends with the opposite sex platonically? Definitely, 100%. Okay. I do it all the time. Okay. So, Would you say that you have had to make room for your partner to adjust to this type of friendships? And not only just making room, like intentionally making room, i.e. be having a conversation with your partner and just letting them understand the status quo on what these friendships are, especially them being with the opposite sex. Am I being specific in my own scenario? Or no, no, in your, in your scenario. I mean, I know me and you and Ebs are fine, so yeah. I'm not worried about that per se. But then I also know, like he did say, that he has other female friends, right? And so I'm just saying, just generally, when so you guys started dating, I think, dating I think and what then... it is is um, depending on what the scenario is. Mm. Every scenario is different, right? Standard. So if it's a long time friend, upon you know entering your whatever relationship you're going mm -hmm. into, ideally they should know about that I have this friend. Yeah. Right. If they don't, and this person is this close to you, then alarm bells, right? Um, if it's a new friend, mm -hmm. then it's on you. The onus is on you to make your partner comfortable about the friendship, mm. where it's coming from, how it came about. And then make sure that they get along. You know, they don't have to, but try your best. Um, and also always choose your partner first. Or put your partner first and everything. So standard. Your partner doesn't have to second guess or wonder if something you know, is. Yeah. The level of intentionality that comes with being friends, generally speaking, do you think it's different with male friends and female friends? Yes. Ah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Why? Women are generally more intentional. <laughs> Mm. Um, they are definitely more open in terms of communication, mm. more frequent in terms of communication, mm. um, and they generally can handle pressure better. Mm. So you wouldn't find a chick telling you, it's rare, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, yeah. but you won't find a chick saying, oh man, I'm going through so much and that's why I just went into my shell. You know, um, women generally deal with stress and pressure day, day in, day out, you know, mm. not saying men don't. Um, but just the way your you know, physiology is built and all of that. So I think you can handle that more um, than guys. Um, and also just the nature of, you know, men and women are different. What? You there, know, there is a lot of, most, most guys don't need a lot of, you know, service in terms of relationships. Um, usually once I imprint on you and identify you as my guy, That's it. you know, my, my value set as a friend already transfers towards you. You know, the grace the loyalty, all of that transfers to you mm. instantly. So I will always make room for you. I will always make excuses for you, mm. you know. And um, yeah, that's it really. I'll, I'll right. give you a simple example. Okay. I, I've realized that I have to be more intentional in my friendship, my female friendship than my male friendship. Because my guys are my guys. They're always going to be there. I might not see them. I feel not see them for six months, but we go sit down and drink beer. And in that one hour, three hours, no we caught up on everything yep. and even projected into the future, mm. you know. But, you know, without my female friendships, you know, sometimes if you don't talk in two months and you pick up the call, you... Now, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how they say some women, when they get married, right, mm -hmm. they just become so focused on just they are married that they can't do anything else and they let go of a lot of their friends, especially their friends. It happens friends. to guys too sometimes. Does it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Very much so. Did you experience that? Yeah, yeah, I did at some point. Okay. At some point. I had to realize that, you know what, you need to step out a bit more, you know, especially because, you know, I'm an entrepreneur as well. Mm. Um, you, you also want to be constantly, you know, working on your network of people so that you're accessible whatnot, so you, you know. need to be accessible yeah because i found at some point I, I was super comfortable in my my bubble Staying work home. was going well you know i had my family going well my kids you know and all of that and i just wanted to stay in that and i think that was like 
probably an extension of COVID mm. as well. And I just wanted to stay in that bubble because it was it was healing it for was me. Safe. It was safe. <laughs> you know, so I just reminded myself that, you know what, bro, <laughs> no food for lazy man. No more malo lose dad. No sleeping on the bicycle. Fair much. enough. So step out and um, you know, have new experiences. Fair enough. So next thing I was going to make it all about me. As your friend, what do you love about me, Abimbola, as your friend? Not we will as what tell people. you as it is. And not everybody will value that, but I do. No, but like I was saying, Bimbo will tell you as it is. <laughs> and for me, that's one of the values that I hold there in life pretty much. Um, if Bimbo tells me it's good morning, I do not have to step outside to, to check because I do believe that it's morning time. Yeah, but Bimbo does have her opinions and she will let you know. And I mean, what's wrong with that? Knowing what your friend really thinks about anything as opposed to wondering what they really think. Especially because usually they ask me. I'm that person that if you don't ask me, my mouth will not open. But if you ask me, I respond by saying, honestly. Really, baby? What? Tell me when I'm giving you shit advice without you asking. I'm not talking about advice now. No, no, I'm just even saying, or oh, said something. If you, well, first of all, know that if you're fucking up, I'll call you out. <laughs> exactly. No, period. That's all facts. Yeah. But only people that I. I had a five minute lesson about wearing yeah. my shoes in the house this afternoon. Yeah. Because I don't know how you're going to step into someone's house and go wear your shoes. Your outside shoe inside the house. Outside shoe. Inside shoe. Whatever. And he knows. He cares. Because even my mother's house, he off his shoe outside. That's your mother. You are not serious. <laughs> Am I not paying rent? Nonsense. Um, as I was saying, um, Koye is fucked. And um, I, 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 I have found grace to be able to show kindness to him. However, what has made it easier is his wife. Koye got very lucky marrying someone like Ebu. She's just a really amazing person. Yep. And she's been able to hold him down. And I don't say that in terms of Raga. I'm talking about in terms of just her temperament and how consistent she's just been. She's literally the opposite of him and has been able to just... They, they have a good balance and synergy. And I think that's just beautiful. Shout out to Yebo. Why did I feel like I was a sneak this? Yeah. Can't you give a compliment without this? Lie, lie. It's never about you, bro. Wow. All right. Now we're going to go quickly and just move on. I am single. My mother's going to be looking at this and she's going to be cringing at this because she's going to be talking about my singleness on my YouTube channel. But I told her that it's my business. As your friend, why would you say that I'm single? And what have you done to get me out of singleness? Shit. Ah! I don't know, man. Yeah! Let go. <laughs> um, certain men would not like to date without um, sex being on the table. And I said certain men, so I'm not generalizing. No, no, I totally agree with you. Um, and I'm sure you've experienced that. Yeah, well. sure. So, you might not be able to look beyond that fact mm. and into your qualities as a person. Mm. Another thing would be um, certain men, mm. you know, um, will not be able to deal with somebody or would not want, not be able to do, probably don't, don't want the drama of dealing with someone who it's is... Not just opinion, but extremely opinionated. Mm. Um, and yeah, so that might be an issue. Um, and also being very smart. So, you know, you, you gotta be smart, bro. If you're stepping up to her, you can't be dumb, you know. So, and then there, there's a question of morals and whatever. I know Bimbo will not, you know, roll with someone with questionable sources of funding. Clearly, I believe I'm correct, right? Right? Mm, uh -huh. Make it rain, daddy. Make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Things do change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, I mean, in some places where a lot of women will, um, let's, do, let's, let's use the word stoop to conquer, that's not Bimbo. Bimbo comes from a large, the long line of, you know, independent, successful women and men. Um, you know, so it's, it's you know, you you will have to come with something more than you know material stuff to impress Bimbo. So now the next question: What have you done to help my singleness? Also, what would you advise me to do? What I have done mm. is make sure I don't introduce you to losers. Uh, have you introduced me to even anybody? Um, did you hear what I said? I've made sure that I do not introduce you to losers. Okay. Do you know? What you have gone through, if you had at least three more losers. They say, let me just throw three more losers your way. 
yeah, you might have had an implosion or never break down or something. So that's that's important. That's a big deal. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Wow. So the first what, question is what I've done about it. Mm. I told you. And then what else? What advice would you give me about going around single men? I don't know. I think I'll just say just be, be open mm. to new experiences. And Maybe less. there's something about me I should change. No, nothing. Or oh, this opinionatedness. No, I think it's just who you are. And I, I don't want you to be in a situation where you're not thriving. Mm. Or you are stunted in your personal or your growth. Mm. So I think just hold out and find the person who would appreciate that. Right. Because you know, a lot of men, especially in this climb, mm. they like women who are agreeable. Mm. I'm not saying it's a good thing, right? But something I've noticed, you know. I agree with you. No, I've down, noticed too. You know, and you ask a few, you ask a few guys, oh, you know, why did you marry your wife and whatever? They're just like, hey, yeah, that's still that this, still that this. Yeah. You know, you wonder, you know, did you marry a robot or did you marry, you know, a human being? So, I think the environment itself also, you know, fosters that it, 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 agreeableness. It, 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 it does. And once you are seen to be going left or everybody going right, you know, it's, it's, it's alarm problem. bells. It's yeah. not necessarily a problem, but oh, no, a problem. you know, women, when we are deciding on future partners and whatnot, mm. we, every single scenario is viewed in a microscopic way, yeah. right? You enlarge, you you know, you look through everything and you yeah. try and project into the future. What this person's persona will be, how this person will handle this mm. life situation. You know, you do a lot of scenario planning mm. in your mind, you know, about your partner and whatnot, because you just want to be sure, right? If I was to get married now, yeah, would you be a bridesmaid? A groomsman. What do you mean, mate? A I'm male, not a groom. A male, a male friend of the bride? Yeah, but I'm going to call it a bridesmaid. A bridesman. Whatever, mate. Would you yeah. be one? I'll be on your train. Boy, what is you as you I'm not wearing a dress, one. though. I, I don't have any train. I don't intend to have train. Okay, so what's my role, then? I do, you will figure it out. You try to make sure that there's alcohol constantly. Wow. The one is to pay for the DJ. Wow. Yes, I already know we're sorting out MC. Wow. Yeah, listen. If I tell you here yeah, that I've never been that girl that... Can I be the hype man? No. I was not hype man at your wedding. I was Queen's MC at his wedding. Yes, she was. You did a great job, by the way. Period. Hire me. Hello. I know for a fact that I don't know who I'm going to get married to. I don't know what color or wedding. I don't know. But let me tell you the part of my wedding that I've always known from the jump. That we have to DJ. One for where? Ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> and we have to DJ. My wedding will be the wedding of the century because people will dance, your leg will hurt you. Mm. It's going to be turned. Alcohol is going to be flowing. My MC is going to be bad. I know it's paying for my MC. I know who's paying for my DJs. There'll be celebrity people in the mix. But We're it's going to go for good alcohol. Balance of <laughs> friends that I grew up with. Because the same way if I have birthday dinners, you always see people that I grew up with. I'm that, I'm that kind of person. I like to keep my old. I'm a new. I like to be fair. So yeah, but it's going to be turns. And Koye is going to be handling drinks. For Which sure. Start donating money now. Yeah. I don't drink, oh, but people... Ah, they will not be able to see when they're walking out of that one. They will not be able to see. They will just be like, ah, man, Kia do. Ah, this is the wedding. It's going to be a poo -poo party. Well, shout out to my clients. I have a client that's an alcoholic drink brand. So, yeah, they'll figure it out. Okay. Before we go, do you have any advice to the next generation regarding life and just friendships generally? Um, if this was your moment to say, okay, you know what, be impactful, what would you say? For friendships, I think just um, make room for your friends as much as possible. Mm. Um, but know your boundaries and draw them when you need to. Um, for life and for work or life in general, mm. I think just um, try to have no regrets. And that said, that I think the worst died. thing you can ever be is an old person who oh, wish they had done this or done that. Listen. So. You know, I'm, I'm close to 40 now, and I already have some regrets, and they're already haunting me. Mm. So you can imagine you have a full life, and it's full of regrets, mm. or half of it is regrets of things you could have done, should have done, people you should have walked up to, to speak to, mm. you know, opportunities you missed, mm. friendships you didn't um, mend or heal, mm. and whatnot. Um, you know, the faith, you didn't, you, didn't the faith you didn't work off on, the trauma that you didn't address, mm. um, you know, the life that you wanted to live that you didn't have. 
So try your best to have no regrets at the end of the day. Whatever that means to you, go Figure for it. it. Out. I wish you the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Adekoejo, I'm, I'm very surprised, you know, for someone that did not plan and had no clue what we're going to talk about. So I'd like to give you a round of applause. Hey. Please give me a round of applause as well. Thanks for coming on my channel. What How did I do? No, no, you did. I, I think you did okay. Okay. I mean, we were scared for a second that we lost some footage, which we did. Maybe like about five minutes, but it's okay. We made it up already. But yeah, cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure you subscribe and yeah, let me know what you think about this kind of yams. It's not an interview. I don't have the energy for such. But yeah, um, again, like I said, I don't know if this is going to be something that's going to be happening. So I have no expectation, but just enjoy these yams for now. Every once in a while, if I'm able to strong arm my real people to just come and have conversations about whatever it is it will be happening. Um, I really can't wait to have my mom on here. We're about to end this. Peace. Bye.